What's up guys, welcome back to another video. And I know I said, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know I said that uh, I was taking a break from filming this week just to kind of relax and enjoy life. Um, I kind of changed my mind. <laughs> um, I saw something on the Facebook page, owners group of the sport tracks. And I was like, you know, this is really cool. And I wanted to tell you guys about what I saw. Uh, I'll include a picture. I hope I have the screenshot still uh, right here in the middle of the screen from the post itself. But a lot's gonna go on in this video. Um, this is replacing the Boosted Mafia Meat video. We are going tonight. Um, I talked around to you know the guys, and they were very, they were really unimpressed with last week's showing. Not as much the people, but the cars themselves. There was a lot of more lifted truck oriented things going on there, which, uh, as you can tell by my friend group, isn't really their thing. Um, I'm the type where I respect all builds, and while I may disagree with the idea of, put, of making a vehicle center of gravity higher, making it more dangerous to drive on the streets but for the sake of ground clearance, I understand why it's done, obviously for ground clearance. So that's why we're not going. Um, I'm not going to go by myself because I don't know anyone really up there. So um, that's kind of that. So we're going to get into today's video. And uh, first off, I'm going to give you guys an update on the truck. So uh, this is my sport track in case you're new to the channel. Uh, it's a 2003 XLS. It's been mildly built for performance but it's having issues right now so i can't really do much performance right now so um this thing is tuned by brand speed it doesn't have the tunes flashed on it at this moment because of the underlying problem which is going on right right in there um basically if you're not new to the channel this thing has developed a misfire over the last few weeks that has progressively started to get worse um we still haven't figured out the problem yet i've checked out spark plug wires vacuum lines uh the plugs themselves i've checked the uh I, we haven't really done anything with the math. I originally tried to clean it, but the, the method that I was used was wrong. So hopefully I'm going to get a way to actually clean it properly this weekend and um, see if that can solve anything. Because I actually have a theory that's what it is. Because when we filmed the video where he fixed my intake, it started freaking out. And I wonder if the math was just tricked or something like that. It was just dirty and needed to be cleaned up good. Uh, the truck itself is dirty and needs to be cleaned up. I mean, look at this thing. It's filthy. But uh, that's kind of that. Uh, that's why it's not having its Brent Speed Tunes flashed yet. Um, this is, uh, yeah, I forget what it's called, um, Ultra Blue Metallic. That's the color. One of my favorite colors this truck ever came when it's running on motives. These are not AMRs. I can't tell you how many times I've been told, oh, you got AMRs in your truck? How'd that work? They're motives. They're completely different. They look very similar to AMRs, but they're not AMRs. So we're going to go ahead and pop open the door for the main thing we're going to be like modifying in this video, I guess you could say. Not even really modifying. Well, besides this, this will be happening very soon. If you can't tell, i got to keep this entry. I'll just have to install it. Okay. So, these. If you guys remember the rims video when I first got the motives, um, my mom bought me these because of how my seats are kind of torn down right here in this area. Not a really bad tear compared to this, though. Uh, these, this actually started happening last week. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take these off and go back to the stock seats. Um, plus, it actually gives me more bolstering with that with these off. So I'm going to take these off. They didn't match the, really the back anyway. And these were just used to kind of camouflage how bad the seats were. <clears throat> Um, that seat's pristine. This one isn't. So I'm just take them off. Go back to rocking the stock gray interior. And yeah, so I'm gonna get back to you guys in a minute once I get that done. Okay, well we're back to rocking the gray interior. Um, these seats are absolutely filthy. I don't know what happened in here during that time period. I had those covers on. I need to get some fabric cleaner in here pronto. But this seat is absolutely pristine. The bolstering is perfect. Um, the fabric isn't torn anywhere. It's got a bit of creasage in it. Not really, like too crazy. That's the seat I'm more worried about. As you can see that bottom bolster right there. It's got all sorts of jacked up. But the actual side bolsters are in pretty good shape. Um, just got to, you know, do some cleaning in here. Get these seats all cleaned up. Like I said, I plan on getting new seats eventually because uh, of what I plan on doing to this thing, which I might announce in a future video. But for now, uh, we're going to get in the meat and cheese of this video. Okay guys, so now that's done, we're going to get in the main meat and cheese of this video, and that is what I saw on Facebook. So, I know this sounds really crazy to make a video on, but um, basically if you're new um, to the world of automotives, uh, or if you weren't at the New York Auto Show this weekend, I wasn't, I just found out about this, Lincoln actually unveiled the new Aviator. and. This is crucial to me because of what it is. It rides on the new Explorer chassis that will be getting revealed either this year or next year, and which is a rear-wheel drive mid-size SUV. They're going back to the old formula that they used prior to this 2011 to 17 or 18 generation that they've been using for the last few years. 
and uh, these Explorers were front wheel drive crossovers that base models were four cylinders. These I believe are gonna be V6 models uh, for base models and stuff. So I think they're going back to what their old formula was. And um, part of the, uh, the, the hype behind it was actually that uh, Ford also mentioned there at that event, they're gonna be doing more trucks and SUVs over the next few years. And a lot of people were already like, well, the Ranger's already been unveiled. The Bronco's already been, you know, announced. The new Explorer's coming in. What else could they do? And with other vehicles, like for other vehicles in the SUT class, such as the Ridgeline returning, as well as the recent Atlas truck that was unveiled also at New York, um, rumors are starting to float around that maybe a third gen sport track's in the making, which would be absolutely amazing content, because I know for a fact if they did the right engine option, say the 3.5 twin turbo or the 5.0 Coyote, I'd be buying one immediately. I'd trade this in. I mean, I'd be I'd be quick, fast, and hurry off this thing um, for that, uh, if it actually looked good. Because one thing I've always given the Gen 1 Sport Track is how good it looks. And uh, I definitely am not going to be giving that up anytime soon. Unless it's worn a 2010 Adrenaline and Blue Flare Metallic. That'd be the only way. <laughs> but honestly, I really hope this comes to fruition. Because as a Sport Track guy, I love these things. They're great trucks. And I'd love to see a third gen come out like a 2019, 2020 model Sport Track coming back into the world. Because that'd be just amazing to have. I love these things to death. They're great trucks. They're great starter vehicles. They do everything you want out of them. And I'm, I can't be happier with it. So I'd love to see a Gen 3 come out. Like things I'd love to see is maybe a more revised honeycomb grill. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the honeycomb as you guys have seen in the past. I actually deleted the grill in one video. But uh, in this black color, it kind of growed on me a little bit. Um, apologize how dirty the truck is, by the way. It's been really bad pollen the last couple days. It was practically green yesterday. Um, but another thing I'd like to see is some more like aggressive looks like the Gen 1 has such as these like more squared kind of angular headlights as you can kind of tell these things are slanted out real good absolutely love this design though that the Ford did with these but I'd love to see same headlight design same slanted and more aggressive look a revised honeycomb actually to be honest I kind of want to see this grill design come back all together the crossbar and the two kind of I don't know if you like they not kidney grills but kind of similar setup to the kidney grills on the BMWs um, kind of like this style the crossbar i've always loved this look the gen 2s didn't have it um, a lot of people do the raptor inspired grills on the gen 2s which i do like um but i'd like to see something more basic such as this the crossbar also of course like i've already stated the engine choices i'd love to see out of a gen 3 sport track would be the 3.5 twin turbo or in this case the new 3.0 which is replacing the 3.5 it seems and a lot of their other cars of like the edge st and stuff like that I like to see one of those twin turbo V6s instead of the 234 pod. I like the 234 turbo, but it's it's uh you know not really fitting of a truck. And that was my only complaint about the new Ranger was it was a 23 only. I would I would be okay if it was like the old Ranger was where it was a 2.3 and a V6. But no, we got the uh 23 only um, here in America. So that's obviously one complaint I had with the Ranger, and I hope they don't do it on the sport track back because if you guys don't know the sport track actually rode on a the original the gen one like this ran on a beefed up ranger chassis which is why it used the 4.0 single overhead cam instead of the windsor like it's a explorer counterpart from the same time period those late 90s early 2000s because well they were using the, the ranger chassis mostly but uh, that's kind of that um obviously ride high wise i'd like it to be stock around where this is i don't want anything too tall the new ranger to me looks a little tall from the factory and of course size wise again similar size to this because the new ranger looks freaking massive as you guys saw in the atlanta auto show video if you haven't watched that link up here in the corner that video was awesome the new ranger was there and it looked huge it looked way bigger than this and uh i'd like to see something about this size out of a new sport track and of course one thing's for sure i've wanted to come standard with stuff you know i want push button start standard i want the uh the digital display standard i want you know the, the navigation maybe standard I think I like how they do their stuff now Michael Storm doesn't have navigation but still got a good radio stuff like that um, obviously some good wheel options obviously I'd like to see like a street performance pack such as such like a like a sport track adrenaline again or sport track lightning for all I know that'd be cool to have or sport track Shelby something like that those will all be kind of cool to see um, this is all just speculation so like I said the uh, new sport track has not been confirmed or denied yet but hopefully it looks like it might come to fruition especially the new aviator out we might see like a new blackwood first or something like that who knows but that's today's video guys thank you guys again for tuning in i know it was rather short but again phone space <laughs> thank you guys again see you guys next video on tuesday